Protestant is not a denomination. It's an umbrella term for any church that doesn't claim to be the one true denomination. Yeah, well, this could be a distinction with almost no difference in a lot of cases. Hello, this is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. This is an edition of Faithful Friday's Divided Devotions, where I like to show that the prayer Jesus made in John 17, the high priestly prayer, or the farewell address, where Jesus prayed to the Father to make them and all of those that will believe on what they do, the, the emerging church, to make them be one like you and I are one. That's what Jesus said to God. Make them one like you and I are one so that the world will know you sent me. Well, Christianity is anything but unified. So I think skeptics like myself can fairly dismiss Jesus. He was not sent by the Father by his own admission. But still, there are a few core beliefs that drove the Protestant Reformation. And what started the Protestant Reformation? Why, that was a German professor of theology, a priest named Martin Luther. I wonder what kind of things Martin Luther said. Well, let's look at his book on the Jews and their lies. What shall we Christians do with this rejected and condemned people, the Jews? Well, Martin Luther, what should we do? First, to set fire to their synagogues or schools. This is to be done to honor our Lord and of Christendom so that God might see that we are Christians. Second, I advise that their houses also be razed and destroyed. Now, keep in mind, I'm quoting this in English and Martin Luther. He probably spoke German, so I wonder, I wonder who would later speak similar things. I, hmm. <laughs> Third, I advise that all their prayer books and Talmudic writings in which such ideal, idolatry, lies, cursing, and blasphemy are taught be taken from them. Fourth, I advise that their rabbis be forbidden to teach henceforth on the pain of loss in life and limb. Hmm, the rabbi should be forbidden to teach on pain of death. Hmm, this Martin Luther guy seems like a good guy. I think it's probably really good that the Christian Protestant church was founded on this guy. Hmm, well, he's got some more good ideas, you know, recommending they put to the flail. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't... I I don't know. I don't know if you want to build a foundation of your movement and your Christ and your Christianity on on this guy. But that's just me. People always strawman each other, but the worst strawman you'll ever hear is when people talk about the differences between Catholics and Protestants. When he says people here, I think he means Christians. Because I don't think atheists and skeptics and Muslims and Hindus find a huge difference between Catholics and Protestants. I mean, we understand you, you all don't agree on stuff. According to a lot of Protestants, Catholics worship Mary, they think you have to earn your way out of purgatory, they think the Pope is right about everything he says, and they think it's just a works-based religion overall. I don't want to say any time an apologist opens their mouth they're lying, because that wouldn't be graceful of me. But Jesus Christ. So, in his How People Straw Man Catholicism, he creates a straw man. So, so, he writes, picking your nose gives you a hundred years in purgatory. And then he, he says that the, the Catholic position of purgatory is straw man. Well, it might be true. It might be true that people make fun of purgatory or straw man or, or don't. But, well, let's just ask the Catholics themselves and catch catech, catechism. Or ca, how do you say that word? Catches, catechism. Catechism. The Catholic Church, the final purification or purgatory 
this is 1030. I don't know if that's like, I, I'm not Catholic and I never went to Catholic school as Protestant. So I don't know if the 1030 is like a verse or a, a statement, but 1030 says, all who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified are indeed assured of their internal salvation. But after death, they undergo per purification as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. Now, I'm reading this on a Catholic website. I don't think I'm misrepresenting it. I mean, I'm not explaining what it means. I'm just reading their own material. 1031 says the church gives the name purgatory to this final purification of the elect, which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. Now, that to me sounds like the Catholics have some doctrine. Now, maybe different Catholics have different interpretations of what it is. But to say purgatory is just a, a straw man doesn't make sense. Now, let's look at the Pope's infallibility. Hold on a second. All right, I don't want to get too into the details, but it, apparently there was a Vatican Council in 1869, 1870, that holds that the Pope is preserved from the possibility of error when he proclaims a doctrine of faith or morals to be held by the whole church under specific conditions. Ex cathedra declarations. They think the Pope is right about everything he says. Uh, this does not mean the Pope is incapable of sin or error when he's talking about Cheerios. So the 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 creator of this video is creating a straw man to show how people straw man it is sort of ironic except we know he's he's a protestant christian so of course he's gonna you know i don't know he's the the funny thing is here he's trying to say don't straw man catholics and then he creates a straw man of the thing that he's trying to say don't do and according to a lot of Catholics, Protestants don't believe in the sacraments, they think church is a free-for-all where you can interpret the Bible however you want, they think there's no beauty in music and architecture, and they think as long as you say you believe in Jesus, you'll go to heaven. But none of this is true. All right, so again, he's creating kind of a caricature, a straw man to say people straw man. But just like in the, the underpinning of the Catholic things that he said are straw man, there's an underpinning to and a, a truth in what people say about Protestantism. Protestantism. So, for instance, if if a Protest, Protestants don't view the sacrament, uh, the Eucharist, the same as Catholics do, so it's not a straw man to say that that they have a different sacrament. But the other one is actually kind of funny. They think church is a free-for-all where you can interpret the Bible any way you want. Well, that's actually not a straw man for the most part. Protestant churches, the reason there's so many of them, is that, yes, there's not a higher authority like in Catholicism, and so you can interpret the Bible any way you want. And if you interpret it in a way that's so ridiculous nobody will follow you, of course you don't have a church. But if you interpret it in a way that a lot of people agree with you, all of a sudden you're a Methodist or a Presbyterian or a Pentecostal or some modern non-denominational movement. I, that's the complaint Catholics have about what Protestantism did to the Christian church. It took what was supposed to be uniform and it fractured into a whole bunch of pieces. Now, the Catholic Church could be the most evil, rotten, terrible, lying institution on the planet. So if you're if you're a Protestant, you can say, hey, the Catholic Church is rotten, the Pope, and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, okay, even if that's true, that doesn't make your church the right church, or he put you even in the bright ballpark, because there's, as soon as you say a belief, there's another Christian that says something else. That uh, that actually that's that's barely a straw man, dude. Uh, as long as you say you believe in Jesus, you go to heaven. Well, did the did the thief on the cross go to heaven? Like he believed in for you know he had about thirty seconds of being in a believer in Jesus as the Messiah, and Jesus said he would be in paradise. So there is a reason why Christians do that. Now, yes, it's a it's a straw man if a Catholic says, oh, that people can just say they believe in Jesus and they get to go to heaven. That's ridiculous. And yeah, okay, that would be a straw man, fine. But the basis of the idea is not that much of a straw man. I know that I'm a sinner. 
there is a doctrine in many people's churches and beliefs that if you believe in Jesus and you say the words, this is why many churches have altar calls. And, you know, there's a simple prayer. Bow your heads. And everyone in the congregation or everyone at the, at the service bows their head. And then it's like, you know, if you feel the Lord speaking to you today, and if you want to dedicate your life, if you want to accept Jesus in your heart, raise your hand. And then, you know, yes, I see you. And, and then, you know, and then depending on the church and the denomination, the, the pastor might say, no, if you've raised your hand, I want you to take a bold step and stand up. And then, you know, of course, people feel obligated and they're feeling emotional. And then they get those people to come up and they get them to say the sinner's prayer. So if if that's what ca Catholics are, 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 if you're saying Catholics are straw manning this idea that believing in Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you caricature it, it's a straw man, but it's not that far from what actually happens and what many people believe and many churches practice. The first straw man to avoid is about what Protestant even is. Like we said, it's not a denomination, it's a category of denominations. Now, some people say there's like 40,000 Protestant denominations, but this isn't true. There's about eight Protestant traditions. Notice how he says that <clears throat> many people say there's 40,000 Christian denominations, but then he says that isn't true. And then he says there's eight, about eight traditions. Well, the word tradition and the word denomination are different words. So he's lying. He's deceiving. He's not being honest. Now, it's, I've come to expect this from Christian apologists, that they can't be honest. The question is why? Well, let's do a little bit of research about how many denominations there are. Just out of curiosity. Okay, if you if you want to say there's eight traditions, fine. But at the end of the day, you could say there's one tradition. There's only one tradition, and that's Jesus and Christianity. When you start breaking it up, however, whether you want to use traditions, denominations, groups, sects, it gets to be a lot more complicated. So, for instance, major Protestant branches include Adventism, Anabaptism, Anglicanism, Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, Moravianism, Quakerism, Pentecostalism, Plymouth Bethel, Reformed Christianity, and some other word I can't even pronounce, but I won't even try. There's Continental Reformed, Presbyterian, Evangelical Anglican, Congregationalist, Amish, Apostolic, Mennonite, and you know, and then there's like the Latter-day Saints and Jehovah's Witnesses. Everybody just says, oh, they're not really Christians, uh, but they're still out of that branch. They're out of the branch of Christianity. You can call them cults. I don't care. Just say they're wrong, but they still came out of it. And then there's the United Church of Christ and Jewish Christianity and different types. And, and going back into early Christianity, which you can't, you can't just dismiss that. So I know modern Christians like to say Marconianism. Well, we don't have to count that because those guys, that's a long defunct movement. But they were still part of early Christian movements. And yeah, even at 2x speed, that that section I just edited out because it got boring. You can go to Wikipedia denominations or some other site, and you can see. It's astonishing how many different versions and churches and denominations and sects and movements and branches of movements of movements of movements. It's insane. It's, it's so far from being unified or having a clear, straightforward message that it's, it, it's just kind of funny and sad. Now, you still might say that Catholics and Orthodox have more unity than Protestants, but that's not exactly true either, because they belong to a category that we could call ecclesialist, meaning they think their denomination is the only true denomination, whereas Protestant is any denomination that does not claim to be the only true denomination. Yeah, many Protestants don't claim to be the only true denomination, but if you actually talk to the people that go to those particular denominations, and you ask them what it takes to be saved, this is a distinction often without a difference because they'll describe salvation in such a way that if you go to some other church besides theirs, you're probably in trouble. We also have to distinguish between historic Protestants, meaning Protestants that claim to be a continuation of the Catholic Church, and Restorationist Protestants, meaning Protestants that think the true church died out early on and they're the ones that are restoring it. And technically you could say that some of the heretical cults are both ecclesialist and restorationist because they believe true Christianity died out early on and they're the ones restoring it, but they also believe that they're the one true church. So the point of all this is to say that Protestants aren't any any more divided than ecclesialists are. In fact, you could say that they're less divided. Yeah, you could say they're less divided if you're completely dishonest and just an asshole about it because you have just no true Scotsman to everybody out of your 
true, true Christians. And once you do that, once you know true Scotsman, everybody out of the definition, then, wow, it, John 17's now come true. Jesus prayed for unity, and we're all unit. We, we all agree on exactly the same stuff. We're completely unified. Uh, those other guys aren't real Christians. Those, those guys are the bad guys. They're not real Christians, so they don't count. <laughs> That's like saying every football fan is a Kansas City Chief fan. Don't believe me? Well, let me explain what a true football fan is. A true football fan is somebody who roots for the guy that won the Super Bowl. And if you aren't cheering for the team that won the Super Bowl, you're not a real fan of football because true fans of football root for winners. You get how stupid that is? Because even though Protestants have different denominations, they recognize each other as true Christians and can usually still take communion together. They recognize each other as true Christians. Do you see what he did there? He just defined everybody that's not under his umbrella of a true Christian and then said, but Protestants are less divided than Catholics because they can take communion together and they recognize that they're true Christians. As long as they're a true Christian, as long as we're using the definitions I want, as long as we define Christian, what was that? What? what excuse me? Oh, somebody's babbling about true Scotsman. Ah, fuck you, motherfucker. I don't care about true Scotsman. Come on, it's true Scotsman. Ah. You know, you can't be a real atheist until you sacrificed a live goat under a full moon and drank its blood. Whereas the ecclesialist denominations cannot take communion together, and traditionally they often saw each other as damned. So the point is that spiritual unity is more important than institutional unity. So in this video, when we talk about Protestants, we're only talking about historic Protestants that follow the beliefs of the Protestant Reformation, and we're also not including any theologically liberal versions of them. Well, gee, if you exclude everybody that doesn't agree with you, then holy shit, the church is completely united. <laughs> I mean, it's it. I've just had an epiphany. I've just had an epiphany. I am the only true Christian on earth, and everything that I say is true, and therefore we know that the true Christian church is completely united because a house divided against itself cannot stand. I am not divided against myself. I am the only true Christian on the face of the earth. Woohoo! Problem solved. So now we can avoid straw manning each other. He literally just wiped out, you know, half of the Protestants on the planet are more by saying they're not real Christians. Maybe 75%. And then he says, now we can avoid straw manning each other. I mean... It's fine it's fine to have disagreements but when you can't argue fairly and you just make stuff up are you you create no true scotsman uh, fallacies with a straight face then your your arguments are pointless it it's like you're again you're you're essentially arguing I have the truth and anybody that doesn't agree with me is just wrong and because I say everybody that disagrees with me is wrong Therefore, I'm right. Do you, do you see how silly that is? Especially on the question of how one gets to heaven. According to a lot of Catholics, Protestants think we're saved by faith alone and works don't matter. According to a lot of Protestants, Catholics think we're saved by faith plus works. But in reality, Protestants do think works matter. Because even though faith alone leads to justification, works lead to sanctification, and works are always the result of a true faith, so you can't separate faith and works. And Catholics don't exactly believe we're saved by faith plus works. Catholics believe we're saved by faith, but faith includes works as well as participating in the church, so it's not exactly faith alone. <laughs> Here's why this still matters. Because Protestants distinguish between Blah, 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 blah. Words, 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 words. If you were to go out in the street and poll people that were self-identified as Christian or Catholic Christian, whatever, 90% of people couldn't explain what those words even mean. And probably about 98% of people couldn't give a coherent 
definition, even if they knew that like what sanctification meant, they they wouldn't be able to give a detailed um, explanation about how that applies to them, what scriptures underpin that belief, et cetera. And, and the arguments against why that distinctive belief is challenged by people, whether you're Protestant or Catholic on the other side. Plus, as I said before, this guy's eliminated so many Protestants as not being true Christians, so they don't get to play in this game. You see how this game works? If if you you can massage and twist things and make all kinds of bizarre arguments, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if 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 the if some form of the Christian God is real. And it actually matters to this God that normal people with normal lives and normal intelligence and a normal amount of resources, meaning time, money, and energy, to actually study the scriptures and understand this stuff. If if all of that stuff matters to God and it has it plays some part in how you're rewarded or punished or sent to hell or heaven, then this God is a monstrous monstrous, evil, sadistic, and cruel master who should not be worshipped but should instead be mocked. Can you imagine can you imagine a parent telling some of their kids, uh, you're going to be punished or I don't love you or you're going to be locked in the basement and tortured because you don't have the mental capacity or the time to understand the subtle differences that have been fought by theologians for, you know, 2,000 years practically. <clears throat> Could you imagine a parent doing that? No, right? Because that kind of parent would be an asshole. And everybody would acknowledge that parent was being cruel and unkind and unreasonable. But yet when it comes to God, people think, oh, it's, it's totally reasonable. It's totally reasonable that God expects these things. It's totally reasonable to have a right relationship with God, to flourish on this earth and to go to heaven, that you have to understand these intricate differences in theology that even very smart people that have dedicated their lives and gone to seminary or et cetera, et cetera, don't agree on. Now, if this stuff doesn't prove to you that it's all just bullshit, then you're just buying into the game. You're being duped. You're being fooled. You're being tricked. You're being taken advantage of. The differences between Protestant and Catholicism at the end of the day, if God is real, should make zero difference. In fact, if God was loving and just and kind, if God actually cared about humanity, there's two options here. One, he would make himself very clear and everyone would have the same religion. That, that, would be the, that would be actually a nice God. A father who cares about his children enough to make sure they understand what he wants and what the rules are. That would be a loving God. That would be what you would expect a human God to do. Or, or the other possibility here is some form of uni uni universalism. Whereas everybody gets to go to heaven because at the end of the day, people have very limited free will in much of this stuff. If you were raised by good, loving Catholic parents, could God actually expect you not to be Catholic? And if for some reason you go to, you know, you go through all the the Catholic rites and you're a good Catholic and your parents love you and your grandparents love you and you're baptized and you and you maybe you, you even go to university and you are a firm catholic and you and you love jesus and you do you know you do good works and you pray so you have faith you have you have works you have you know, by all accounts everyone in your community thinks that you are a, you know you you're a good human you do nice things you're not out it's not just that you're not robbing banks but you're actually say giving to the poor giving to charity you're helpful you're kind you're not hurting people on purpose and and god and but god is going to expect you 
to go investigate, read and study and figure out that Catholicism's wrong and that you should have been or should change to become a Protestant. And then you would also have to spend at least a few years studying to find out which which type of Protestantism to be in. Do you see how stupid that is? Do you, at the end of the day, if you can recognize how stupid that is, then you can recognize that the entire game is just dumb. It's a dumb game. And you should quit playing this game. And I'm not saying quit. you have to quit believing in in God or quit being a spiritual person or even quit being a Catholic or a Protestant. Just recognize, though, that it, the exclusivity, when you start saying the other guy's not getting it right, you're committing a, not only are you committing a no true Scotsman fallacy, you're just being a bigot. You're, and you're being unreasonable. Now, the worst in this, the, the worst people in this tend to be Calvinists. And we pretty much all non-Calvinists agree Calvinists are just pieces of shit. Their theology is pieces of shit. They're not good people when they when they spout these insane, ugly, bigoted, and often racist views that God chose some people. If that were true, if the Calvinist theology is true, that means heaven is going to be mostly white people. And if you don't think that makes you a racist, then you're just a fucking racist idiot who doesn't realize you're a racist. You guess what? You're a racist. Now, I'm not saying that for heaven to be fair or for God not to be a racist, that, that he would have to do a count. And at the end of the day, say, oh, we have we have enough. We have a good mix of whites and blacks so we need some Asians in heaven. OK, let, let those guys in, but send those guys to hell. That, like if God did that, it would be, just be a caricature of nonsense. But the the way the way that Calvinists imagine heaven, it's filled with mostly white people. If you don't recognize that's fucking racist, then what the fuck's wrong with you? So my point being is, if God doesn't love humans enough to either just save everybody, like all the Hindus and all the Muslims and all, if God, if that, if that's not God, when the, then one. A, he's not a loving father. He's a he's a cruel, mean, sadistic father. Or the the other you, you know your other option here your other option here is just to recognize that this all this stuff's bullshit, and then and, and that's when you start saying okay I don't really believe but I don't want to be an atheist I don't want the label okay fine don't be an atheist still believe in God. But just recognize God hasn't made himself clear. So it doesn't matter what church you go to at the end of the day. Uh, and, the, and maybe this will make you somewhat of a Methodist, right? Like, what's Jesus want? Well, social justice and a better world for humans because he loves humans. And if you don't think Jesus loves people and wants the world to be a better place, then what the fuck's the point in the first place? Like, what are you even spouting this nonsense for? Do you really think that God doesn't... Like, God doesn't actually care if there's social equity and the world's just and countries make just laws and countries treat people good and people treat each other good. God doesn't care about that. He wants you to have the right theology and it needs to be the right reform theology. And if you're not going to a Presbyterian church, you're probably off the, you know, you're off the can. Because obviously the Presbyterian church is the closest that the closest to the true right church that Jesus would want. Like if Jesus was on earth right now, what church would he go to? Obviously the Presbyterian church, obvio. I mean, to even ask that question just shows what a degenerate you are. How could you not know that? Anyways, I think this video, I think I've gone far enough on this video. What else is the point? If you really think these distinctions matter, if you're really caught up in these theology wars, then you're just another bigot. You're a bigot. Just face it. Look in the mirror and say, I'm a bigot. And then ask yourself, why am I a bigot? Why would I want to go to a heaven that was filled with mostly white people that were Western, raised in a Western culture? Why would you want to go to that heaven? Like, 
and I'm not saying people have the same bodies. Maybe God, maybe your version of heaven, everybody's just automatically white because God just God just cleans everybody to whiteness. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because our human body, like our spirits aren't white or black, right? That's what you would argue. Well, our spirits are our spirits don't have a color. Do you do you think when you get to heaven that there's still gonna be you're still gonna be you? And if that's the case, you're still gonna have your fucking culture, right? So if 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 and you're still gonna be you. If you're still gonna be you in heaven, that means there's gonna be people in heaven that prefer jazz over hip hop, and people that prefer hip hop over rock and roll, and people that prefer rock and roll over classical music. And if that's not the case, then are you imagining heaven? You're just a brain dead puppet. I only like Mozart and instrumental music. And I don't like pork. And I love everybody. And we are all equal. Praise Jesus. Isn't heaven wonderful? I love Jesus. No, come on. If you believe that, you're... you're, you're <laughs> That every one of these things can be taken to a logical absurdity where you have to go, oh, well, no, no, it's not like that. Of course not. Of course it's not like that. Well, what's it like then? In heaven, your your brain is erased from all these all these wrong things. Like, like do you imagine, like, well, maybe Catholics get to go to heaven, but they're going to be corrected when they get there. Ho oh, ho, those Catholics will be put in their place. Come on. At the at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this and close, if if you don't believe everyone gets to go to heaven, then you're just a bigot. And if you do believe everyone goes gets to go to heaven, then I then I guess how you live on this earth is just important in the sense are you being a good person and doing good things and what you actually believe in terms of theology, it's just mental masturbation. If it make if if you have if like it's it's like I like to argue or talk or discuss simulation theory because it's fun. Maybe we're in a game. I like to watch Rick and Morty and imagine all the parallel universes, but I don't live my life based on those things. I don't have a theology about it, and I don't tell other people if they don't believe it, there, there's something wrong with them. You get it or no? You just think, yeah, if you only knew my Jesus, you would understand my church is the right church. And obviously, all those other churches are wrong. That's what you would understand, and you're going to go to hell. Yeah, okay. I'll take hell. You know why? I don't want to be around a bunch of bigots like you. If you think that way, you're a bigot, I'll take hell. All right. Enough for this week. It's obvious. Just read John 17, the high priestly prayer the upper room farewell address jesus said father make them one like you and i are one obviously you guys don't agree jesus or you don't think jesus and god fight you think he's perfectly unified the church is the complete opposite of that like it's a 180 so ununified it's insane so obviously jesus was not sent by god if you're a christian you're just wasting most of your time and your life on this stuff i mean do if you're doing good works continue like that's that's great Help the poor, fight for social justice, and you know, I, just be a good person. Don't hurt other people, and that's it. And if that doesn't get you saved to heaven, then guess what? Come join us in hell because it's going to be a way better place. Mm -hmm.